Caitlin Clark and the Fever started 0-10 against teams at or above 500. They finally broke through a couple of weeks ago, and they just keep winning. 4-1 against such teams since, including a huge road win yesterday in Minneapolis against the Lynx. Caitlin Clark was having a bad game until the fourth quarter when she sparked the comeback win. They outscored the Lynx 28-14 in the fourth to win by seven. They remain number six in our power rankings, though, because those top five teams, look at the difference in win-loss record there. All, all those teams, that whole top five is at least five games better than the Fever, who are, are clawing their way back after that 1-8 start to the season. They're 11-14. and 14. The Liberty back on top after a victory over the Sun this week. Let's bring in WNBA analyst Ty Carter here on HQ Spotlight. We're going to start at the top. We only have a couple more game days left before the All-Star break in the Olympic break, so we got to enjoy it. The Liberty enjoying things right now. So much star power, so deep. But how great was Sabrina Unescu last week? Man, Sabrina Inescu has been awesome, especially seeing that in their last game, Brianna Stewart, she didn't even play. She was out with that right hamstring. But you think about how Sabrina Inescu has been scoring the basketball at will. She has four straight games where she scored 20 points or more. And then she absolutely took over in that first game against the Chicago Sky. You talk about the big win over the Connecticut Sun, who they've been fighting with that number one spot for. Sabrina Inescu had the game winning block big buckets down the stretch and she just continues to show that she is that girl quite frankly um she's leading the team in scoring right now and that once was brianna stewart and last year that was the name that everybody was calling on because she had that mvp season but sabrina inescu has really answered the call she stepped up when her team has needed it the most and she's definitely been dominant at that point guard position liberty and son have kind of been going back and forth links were up there for a little while but here come the Aces. They were down at number six or so just a few weeks ago, but since Asia Wilson broke down following that loss to the Liberty, they've won 10 of 11. They're all the way up to number two. Was that the defining moment of the turnaround for this team when Wilson went up there to the podium after that tough loss to the Liberty? Well, I would say that and having Chelsea Gray back in yeah. the fold to make her feel comfortable, <laughs> that point guard who's going to make sure she's getting the ball in the right places at the right time. I think it was just the team dynamic was a bit off because she wasn't out there on the floor. But with Chelsea Gray, they're just uh, so much of a better team. And Asia Wilson, we would need two days on this show alone to just talk about everything that she has done this season because that's how incredible she's been. She had her first 2020 game where she had 24 points and 20 boards in a win over the Seattle Storm. Yesterday, she had 28.17 rebounds. She is the first player to have 25 plus points and 10 plus rebounds in a span of 11 games this season. And so you talk about her 14 double doubles that she's had. Uh, the record breaking is uh, really insurmountable for her and she just continues to up the score. Uh, by the end of the season, she should be hands down if she keeps this up, the unanimous MVP, like nobody is messing with her right now. So I think a lot of it has to do with her willpower. Yes, she broke down in that meeting, but also when we go back to last season, that fourth place vote, whoever voted her fourth <laughs> in the MVP race, that really, that took it, she took it to heart and she's not playing around about that. And so when you talk about somebody coming for their get back, that's what Asia Wilson is doing. Yeah, it, it, it seems like right now, if you were to hold the vote for the first <laughs> half, she would be a unanimous MVP running away with that right now. The Sun down at number three after that heartbreaking loss to the Liberty. How close are these three teams at the top right now? I would say they're really close. Like uh, anything can change. I think what we have to mark our calendars for is after the All-Star break, August 17th, the New York Liberty and the Las Vegas Aces, they're going to link up. And so that team, um, both teams, they feature Olympians. But outside of that, um, when you look at these rankings, the Sun, they're right there and, and they continue to be on the prowl for that number one spot, but they have to find consistent offense. I think their defense is their constant, but the separator between the Liberty and the Aces is they have players who can score the basketball at will. And when the Sun aren't on, it's very telling. Yeah, the Sun, a team that started so hot, first place for several weeks in our power rankings and, and still real close, really good team, but uh, knocked down to number three after that loss to the Liberty. Down at number four, the Minnesota Lynx, 
a team that won the Commissioner's Cup, but lost Nafisa Collier, and they've lost, I believe, five of their last eight games. Mm -hmm. How much of their, their recent struggles, including yesterday against the Fever, how much does that have to do with Collier's injury? Well, Collier is what you call their closer, right? She's the finisher. She's the constant in their offense. She can score the basketball at will. And so I think a lot of it has to do with that. When they had that big loss to the Seattle Storm this week, the only player to score in double figures in that game was Kayla McBride. That's very telling that they're missing a huge piece of their offense when you go through a whole game and only one person scores in double figures. So I think what I love about the Minnesota Lynx is they do have some dynamic role players like Adorka Uhaws, Bridget Carlton. She's knocking that thing down from the three like no other right now. But when your star is out and you don't have another one to punch, like a Brianna Stewart on your team, like a Sabrina Inescu, like a John Quill Jones who can pick up the slack on offense. I think that's what the Minnesota Lynx are lacking. Lynx at four and, and then the Seattle Storm at five. There's a drop off in the standings, obviously down to the teams in sixth, seventh, eighth place. But right now the competitive balance on the court is, is starting to uh, kind of tighten up with the fever. Four and one in their last five games against teams with a 500 or better record and the victory over the Lynx. What is the fever showing you over these last couple of weeks? Grit. I really love their grit. I love their fight because that game yesterday, it was very back and forth. And Caitlin, like you said, you alluded to it in the open of the show. She didn't have the best game, but I think what they're finding is a balance in their scoring as well. It's not just Caitlin getting up these shots, but Aaliyah Boston, she had a career high 16 rebounds in yesterday's win, and she also had 17 points. Kelsey Mitchell, she's getting it on the score in action as well. Um, you know, she's a two time All Star right now, so that's something that she's always done and Alyssa Smith so I think their core are just learning how to work together and they're digging deep when the going gets tough because even in that game against the New York Liberty when they won they were down and out a lot of people could have said that one was over but they just found a way and that's what this young squad is doing right now and so you have to just love their energy you have to love their effort in a way that they continue to fight. Right now they have the second to last playoff spot. They're a game ahead of the sky. Sky dropped two straight. Angel Reese's double, di uh, uh, excuse me, double double streak snapped at 15. Now they have to play the Aces to close out the first half. How much of their struggles have to do with how difficult the schedule has been lately? I would say it's a it's a mixture of both. I think as a team, they haven't been on their P's and Q's when it comes to scoring the basketball like they should. And that game where Asia Wilson lost that double-double streak, she was just three for 13 from the field. And so a lot of people, um, you know, the, the chatter was, well, the Liberty, they sent four people at her at the end of the game. And so she wasn't able to get a shot off. But the reality is when you go three for 13 from the field, you had so many other attempts to score the basketball. She had had eight points and 10 rebounds. So I think for them, yes, scheduling has been hard, but I think another thing is they have to uh, find their source of offensive consistency. Kennedy Carter, she can definitely fill it up, but she sort of got benched uh, in that last game against the, the New York Liberty when she wasn't able to find her stride. Coach Teaspoon was like, listen, I got to throw somebody in there who is going to give us that, that pep in our step that we need. And so I think for them, it just comes down to one, how do we play Camille and Angel together and consistently feed them the ball and allow for them to work off each other. And then two, who is going to be that go-to scorer in a consistent manner when we need a bucket? It's been Kennedy Carter, but I think structurally, they just have to figure out and break down their offense a little bit more because I think defensively, teams struggle with them because of the height and the size that they have on the inside. But uh, now it's going to come down to one, kind of like the Fever are doing, how do you find a way to win against tough teams. Full power rankings at CBSSports.com heading into the last week before the All-Star and Olympic break. Ty Carter with us breaking it down here on HQ Spotlight. As you look at the standings, top eight teams make the playoff. Fever and Sky, the last two teams in right now. Most teams with one game left before the break. This weekend, Saturday, we'll have that All-Star game where the All-Stars will play the U.S. Olympic team and then the break for the Olympics.